Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio Central video. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make your very own Roblox Game Pass for your game. So, what you want to do first is you want to open your game. I'm going to open a new game. This is for a test. And you want to make sure that your game is published. So, I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm going to click the Game Settings icon. So let's go ahead and publish our game. Make sure to fill out all of your uh, details here for your game. And click Create. So we're just going to wait for a second for it to make it, but it did not. And I'm gonna go straight to a already published game. So I believe I have one right here. So we're gonna open a random one. Awesome. So now that our game is loaded, finally. Make sure your game is published, so we have all the settings here. You want to make sure that third-party sales are on. And what you want to do is you'll want to go and create your game pass. So I'm going to just refresh my page, and I'm going to go to the game where my game pass is stored. So you want to make sure that the game matches the one in Roblox, Create, my creations and experiences. You want to find that game. So I'm going to go here, I believe. One thing I'll do is I'll go into basic info and I'll just change the name so I know which one I have to create the game pass for. So I'm going to go here and make it test game pass game. I'm going to save that. I'm gonna go here. There we go. It's this game. So we're gonna click the gear icon. We're gonna click create game pass. So once you're in the page to create the game pass, make sure that your target experience is the same as your game's name. You do not want to create a game pass to a game that's not your game. H uh, hard to take in, but just bear with me. Find your image. So you want to make sure that your game pass icon is the image you've chosen. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a file. Let's go ahead with this settings icon. I'm going to make it game pass. Make sure that the pass name is the, the, what you want it to be. So mine is going to be game pass. You can have it uh, to be a uh, hundred cash or special ability. You can have it with anything. I'm just gonna make game pass. Description is what you like describing your game pass. So this is a game pass. Once you've finished, click preview and make sure that all of the information is correct. Once you're ready, click upload. Once your game pass has been created, click the gears icon beside it and click configure. And what we want to do is we want to enable it. So go into sales and enable item for sale. You can change the price to uh, how much you want, but keep in mind that creator earnings are only 70% and the rest of the 30% are Roblox taxes, meaning that Roblox takes 30%. So if I were to set my price to 100, 70% is 70 Robux, and the rest of the 30 Robux go to Roblox. A total of exactly 100 Robux would be about 143 Robux. But I'm gonna keep mine as 100. Once you're ready, click save, and click go to details. You want to grab this ID from the URL, 
and this is going to be your Game Pass ID. Once you're ready, go back to Roblox Studio and create your Game Pass button. So if you're going to be creating a button, create that button and add a local script inside of it. So what we want to do first is we want to uh, define the players or player. So local player equals game dot player dot local player. And next we're gonna have to define the marketplace service. For this, I'm gonna use marketplace service MPS is equal to game get service marketplace service. Next is we want to define the game pass ID. So I'm gonna do local ID equals and my game pass ID that I got from my URL up here. So now we want to script the button. We're gonna go ahead and do script.parent that mouse button one click, connect function, and we're gonna go ahead like that. One thing you could do if you like is you can create a function with a script that you'll fire if the player bought the game pass. Let's go ahead and create that real quick. So local function was purchased or game pass purchased. And this is going to be where you're going to store what happens when they purchase it and if they purchase it. So we're going to go ahead and do, um, I'm just going to print yada 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 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will make sure that this is what is going to happen when I buy the game pass. So now in the back in line 10, we want to prompt the, the game pass. So we're going to do marketplace service or MPS prompt game pass purchase. And as you can see, there's multiple prompts. These are for different products. So product bundle, premium, product, general purchase, and subscriptions. Because we're uh, using a game pass, we're gonna do prompt game pass purchase. Inside of here, we want to define the player and we want to prompt this game pass, the ID. So when they click the button, it's gonna prompt the game pass. But now how do we check if they actually purchased it? That isn't as hard as you think. All we have to do is do MPS dot uh, prompt the game pass purchase finished and we're going to connect the player, the ID, so if the player purchased this game pass and we want to add the was purchased variable. So now we're going to do if was purchased, then. So if the game pass was indeed purchased and the transaction is complete, we're going to go ahead and do game pass purchased, which is this function right here that does whatever you said it wanted to do. If it was not purchased, then we're going to warn that the, uh, that the player, that name, hasn't really purchased the game pass. And that's all. One thing I recommend doing is adding a cooldown. You can use that as a debounce. So local debounce will be false. And after line 10, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do if db for debounce is equal equal to false, then and after this, we're going to just do another and. I'm going to quickly format it. So if... Uh... There we go. So if db is false, they want to set db to true. So that they cannot click it again. After that... It's going to go through this function, then it's going to wait 10 seconds. Then I want to set db to false so that they can click it again. That's all you have to do. Let's go and test the button. All 
All right, so I'm gonna try and click the button. You can see that we have an error saying that I already own the item. So all you have to do is go to Game Pass and click Delete from Inventory. There you go. So now we're just going to quote and quickly rejoin. And you can even see that it printed that I did not purchase it. But we're going to click it again. And it says, do you want to buy this Game Pass? If we were to press buy, it says we have successfully bought it. And it'll say yada 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 because we successfully bought it. If we were to click it, and it prompts, like we were to press cancel, like we were like, mm, I don't want to buy it. Cancel. It would say that I haven't really bought it. And it's going to move on. As you can see, I can't really click it again because there's debounce. So you, it does work. And if you want to know that it actually does work, so debounce actually works, you can write an else after db equals false and just say when db is on. Oops. So if the debounce is really on, let's say db is on. There we are, and it says I haven't purchased it. So that's all. You can make it so that if a player steps on a button or something, they step on something, you make it so that that part fires a remote event into probably a local script inside of starter player. Right here, you can do that. And it can still fire it, same thing. Whatever you like. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button if you learned something new today, and comment down below on what I should do next. Little hint, I'm going to be doing a team changer script in our next episode, so stay tuned for that, and turn on your notifications for when that update comes out. Bye!